However, today I'm going to do this awful thing. I'm going to introduce this assignment operation. Now, what is this? Well, first of all, there's going to be a, another kind of, uh, kind of statement, if you will, in our programming language called set. And set, things that do things like assignment, I'm going to put exclamation points after. We'll talk about what that means in a second. The exclamation point, again, like question mark, is an arbitrary thing we attach to the symbol, which is the name, has no significance to the system. The only significance is to me and you to alert you that this is an assignment of some sort. But we're going to set a variable to a value. Okay. And what that's going to mean is that there is a time at which something happens. Here's a time. If I have time going this way, this is a time axis. Time progresses by walking down the page. Then an assignment is the first thing we have that produces the difference between a before and an after. All of the other programs that we've written that have no assignments in them, the order in which they were evaluated didn't matter. But assignment is special. It produces a moment in time. So there is a moment before the, time, the, the set occurs and after such that, such that after this moment in time, the variable has the value value. Independent of what value it had before, set changes the value of the variable. Until this moment, we had nothing that changed. So for example, one of the things we could think of is that the procedures we write for something like factorial are in fact pretty much identical to the function factorial. Factorial of 4, if I write FACT4, independent of what context it's in, and independent of how many times I write it, I always get the same answer. It's always 24. It's a unique map from the argument to the answer. And all the programs we've written so far are like that. However, once I have assignment, that isn't true. So for example, if I were to define count to be 1, and then I'm going to define also a procedure, a simple procedure called demo, which takes an argument x and does the following operations. It first sets x to x plus 1. My gosh, this looks just like Fortran, right? In a funny syntax. And then add to x count, oh, I just made a mistake. I want to say set count to 1 plus count, which is this thing defined here. And set it was to x count. Then I can try this procedure. Let's run it. So suppose I get a prompt, and I say demo of 3. Well, what happens here? The first thing that happens is count is currently 1. Currently, there's a time. I'm talking about time. x gets 3. At this moment, I say, oh yes, count is incremented. So count is 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. So the answer I get out is 5. Then I say, demo of, say, 3 again. Okay, and what do I get? Well, now count is 2. It's not 1 anymore because I've incre incremented it. But now I go through this process. 3 goes into x. Uh, count becomes 1 plus count, so that's 3 now. The sum of those two is 6, so the answer is 6. And what we see is the same expression leads to two different answers depending upon time. 
So demo is not a function. It does not compute a mathematical function. In fact, you can also see why now, of course, this is the first place where the substitution model isn't going to work. This kills the substitution model dead. You know, with quotation, there were some little problems that a philosopher might notice okay, with the substitutions because you have to worry about what deductions you can make when you substitute into quotes, if you're allowed to do that at all. But here the substitution model is dead. Can't do anything at all. Because supposing I wanted to use a substitution model to consider substituting for count. Okay, well, by gosh, if I substitute for here and here, Okay, they're different ones. It's not the same count anymore. I get the wrong answer. A substitution model is a static phenomenon. It describes things that are true, and okay, not things that change. Here we have truths that change. OK, well, before I give you any, any uh, <coughs> understanding of this, this is very bad. Now we've lost our model of computation. And Pretty soon, I'm going to have to build you a new model of computation. But let's play with this just now in an informal sense. Of course, what you already see is that when I have something like assignment, the model that we're going to need is different from the model that we had before in that the variables, those symbols like count or x, are no longer going to refer to the values they have, but rather to some sort of place where the value is stored. We're going to have to think that way for a while. It's going to be a very bad thing and cause a lot of trouble. And so as I said, the very fact that we're inventing this bad thing means that there had better be a good reason for it. Otherwise, it's just a waste of time and a lot of effort. Let's just look at some of it, though, just to play. Supposing we write down the functional version, functional meaning in the old style, okay, of factorial by an iterative process. Factorial of n we're going to iterate of m and i, which says if i is greater than n, then the result is m. Otherwise, the result of iterating the product of i and m. So m is going to be the product that I'm accumulating. m is the product. Okay, And the count I'm going to increase by 1. Plus iter else define. I'm going to start this up. And these days, you should have no trouble reading something like this. What I have here is a, a product that being accumulated and a counter. Okay, I start them up both at 1. I'm going to buzz the counter up. <coughs> i goes to i plus 1 every time around. But that's only way are putting a time on the process. Each of this is just to have truths, true rules. Okay. And m is going to get, re get a new values of i and m, i times m, each time around. And eventually, i is going to be bigger than n, in which case the answer is going to be m. Now, I, speaking to you, use time in this. That's just because I know how the computer works. But I didn't have to. This could be a purely mathematical description at this point, because substitution will work for this. But let's say I write down a similar sort of program doing using the same algorithm, but with, a, with assignments. <clears throat> so this is called a functional version. 